gives free energy and spontaneous reactions. Remember that we talked about the change in entropy for the universe and said that any time we have a spontaneous process, this change in entropy is positive, so it increases. And also remember that the change in entropy for the universe is the sum of the change in entropy for the system and the surroundings. Now, as you might imagine, calculating the change in entropy for the universe is not convenient. And so, to solve this problem, Gibbs proposed a new thermodynamic state function that's derived from three other state functions for the system. So we're going to be looking at the system. And of course, we've seen enthalpy, delta H. We've also seen entropy, delta S, and finally, the temperature. So here's the statement of the Gibbs free energy. So this is our new thermodynamic state function. Now, this is an extremely handy and very, very important relationship. So the free energy is equal to the enthalpy minus the temperature multiplied by the entropy. And so for a change in free energy of the system for a process is the change in enthalpy for that process minus the temperature multiplied by the change in entropy for that process. Now this is at constant temperature and pressure. When we are going to equilibrium, we are going to be maximizing entropy. So entropy is going to be as high as it can get, and the free energy is going to be minimized. So we want the free energy to be as low as possible or minimized. Without going through the derivation, here's our change in entropy for the universe multiplied by the temperature and our negative sign. It turns out this quantity is equal to delta H of the system minus T multiplied by delta S of the system. So again, without derivation. But if you are thinking that this is equal to what we saw previously, delta H minus T delta S, and thought, well, what if this is delta G, then you'd be right. And so you can see also with this sign here that a negative delta G means the process is spontaneous. So delta G is negative for a spontaneous process. And that's in the forward direction or as it's written. Now a negative delta G means the process is spontaneous. So you need to really get that in your head. And a positive delta G means that it's not spontaneous. So it's not spontaneous in the forward direction, but it is spontaneous in the reverse direction. So if the reaction runs in the opposite direction, then it would be spontaneous in that direction. Now, if delta G is equal to zero, then that means the reaction is at equilibrium. So the change in free energy for the system at equilibrium is always zero. So what we're going to learn to do here is analyze the signs of the enthalpy and the entropy and predict whether the sign of delta G is going to be positive or negative. And we're going to be able to use that to figure out whether the process is spontaneous or not. So we're going to go through four cases. And they're summed up in this table here. And we're going to go through them one by one. So here is the first case where the sign of delta H is negative and the sign of delta S is positive. And overall, we're going to get a negative delta G. And we're going to say that this is a spontaneous process at all temperatures. Now, another thing to keep in mind here is that negative delta A is spontaneous from the enthalpy perspective, and positive delta S is spontaneous from the entropy position. So it's not a big surprise that the sign of delta G ends up being negative. So the first case, and this is where delta H and delta S agree. So they both give the same answer. So when delta H is negative, or the enthalpy is negative, or it's an exothermic reaction, all of those ways to describe it, and the change in entropy is positive, then delta G is always going to be negative. So it doesn't matter what the value of enthalpy is, or entropy, all that matters here is the sign, because they both agree. So if we take our equation for delta G, delta H minus T delta S, and we just mentally plug in signs, then we have a negative, and we're going to subtract off 
a positive term. And we know this term is positive because the temperature is in Kelvin. So that always is going to be a positive number. And of course, the entropy is positive. So a negative minus this term. So it's just going to be even more negative. So it doesn't matter what the temperature is. If delta H and delta S agree, then delta G is going to be a negative number, and the process is spontaneous in the forward direction. So now what about the situation where delta H and delta S agree in the other way? So now we have an endothermic reaction where delta H is positive, and the entropy decreases during the reaction. This means that the free energy is always positive. It doesn't matter what temperature we run the reaction, the reaction is non-spontaneous in the forward direction at any temperature. It is, of course, spontaneous in the reverse direction. So let's just take a look at these signs again. So here we have positive delta H. We're going to subtract off a positive number multiplied by a negative number. So negative times a negative is going to give us a positive. So we can see that no matter what the temperature is, if it's high, it's just going to make an even more positive number. So it doesn't matter. No matter what we do, we're going to end up with a positive number for delta G. So it's non-spontaneous in the forward direction, but it is spontaneous in the reverse direction. Let's talk about the more complicated cases where the enthalpy and the entropy disagree. So now we're going to look at an endothermic reaction. So delta H is positive, and delta S is positive. So delta S says, hey, this reaction is spontaneous, but delta H is saying, uh, no. So delta G is going to decide this scenario, and it's going to be decided depending on the temperature. So the reaction is going to be spontaneous in the forward direction if the temperature is high enough. And let's look at these signs to make sure that we can see this. So here we have delta H and delta S, and I filled in a positive sign, so delta H is endothermic. So we have a positive number, and we're going to subtract off this term. Now, as the temperature becomes higher and higher, this term is going to get bigger and bigger. So we'll be subtracting off a larger and larger number as the temperature increases. And at some point, at some temperature, this term, this subtracted term, is going to be larger than our original positive term. So basically, as we increase the temperature, we eventually reach a point where the reaction is spontaneous in the forward direction. We just need to have a high enough temperature. So this slide summarizes that. So if the temperature is high enough, we're going to subtract a larger number. At low temperatures, delta G is going to be a positive number, so non-spontaneous. And as we increase the temperature, then delta G will become negative, and the reaction will be spontaneous in the forward direction. Now, what about the last case? And this is where delta H and delta S disagree again. And delta G is going to decide again, but now we're going to have an exothermic reaction. So delta H is going to be negative, and delta S is also going to be negative. So the entropy is decreasing. And also remember that the temperature is always a positive number. So let's go to the next slide and look at our discussion and analyze our signs. And so we see we have negative delta H, so that's a nice negative number. We're going to multiply a negative by a negative, okay? So this is going to be a positive term. So as we increase the temperature, this positive term is going to get larger and larger. And at some point, this term will be larger than our negative delta H, and the reaction will no longer be spontaneous in the forward direction. So delta G is a negative number at low temperature. So as we, if we keep the temperature low, we're going to have a negative delta G and a spontaneous reaction in the forward direction. But if we increase the temperature beyond a certain point and this positive term overwhelms this negative term, we're going to have a non-spontaneous reaction in the forward direction. So delta G will be positive at high temperatures. So here's just a summary. So when
delta H and delta S agree. Delta H is negative, delta S is positive, delta G is always going to be negative, and so the reaction will be spontaneous in the forward direction. When we have the opposite scenario where they agree, but they both agree that it's non-spontaneous, so positive delta H, negative delta S, we're going to get a positive value for delta G no matter what temperature. If we have a situation where the two do not agree, so we have positive delta H and positive delta S, delta G is going to be negative or positive depending on the temperature. And so if we increase the temperature high enough, we're going to have a negative delta G and the process will be spontaneous. And finally, the last scenario where we have an exothermic reaction that decreases the entropy as it proceeds. So delta G is positive or negative depending on the temperature. So we keep the temperature low enough and the reaction will be spontaneous in the forward direction because we'll have a negative delta G. So next we're going to learn about free energies of formation and we're going to calculate the free energy of a reaction.